Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many can say praise the Lord? How many can say thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. We got a church that is alive. The life, uh, the church of Jesus Christ is alive and well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, those of you that are watching by uh, by way of Facebook or video, Jesus said that technology, knowledge would increase in the last days. That's why we have all this. People in the Philippines and in India and Africa and Mexico can watch and see what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing here in the city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome <laughs> to the uh, evangelism training class. Uh, we have this class every Wednesday, 7 p.m. By the grace of God, I am Pastor Evangelist Jesse Charo to the nations. And we are Golden Harvest Missions Church right here in the city of Las Vegas, Nevada. More information, 702-931-1221. Amen. We are located at 4170 South Decatur, Suite Number 1. Las Vegas, Nevada, 89103. Amen. And uh, those of you that are traveling through Las Vegas, Nevada, we welcome you to come and visit. If you plan to move to the city of Las Vegas, well, we are here with open arms saying that God loves you, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. You want to grow, you're looking for a church that... Uh, where you can be used, amen. Tonight, Wednesday night is uh, evangelism training class, uh, and we're going to share some uh, some goodies on evangelism, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to uh, ask you a few questions here, and then we're going to get into some scriptures. Number one, question number one is. How do I share my Christian testimony? How do I share my Christian testimony? That's a good one. How do I share my Christian testimony? Amen. Because now that we are Christians, we should have a Christian testimony. Amen. We had a testimony when we were in the world. Right? But now that we're Christians, we should have a Christian testimony. Uh, not only that, we're walking out there. We should be a Christian testimony. Uh, number two, what does it mean that our lives should be a testimony for and about Jesus? What does it mean that our lives should be a testimony for Jesus? Number three, how should a Christian stand up for their faith in such an anti-Christian world? How should a Christian stand up for their faith in such an anti-Christian world? Question about testimony. Number four, how can I, how can believers how can believers be in the world this is a good one how can believers be in the world but not of the world how can believers be in the world but not of the world that's a good one because we are in the world but we are not of the world anymore we used to be of the world Jesus talks about uh, the, the ones that are in the church in Christ or outside of Christ outside the church number five is why and how and when should I talk about my faith in the workplace those of you that work why how and when should I talk about my faith in the workplace well in the workplace, I remember when I was working in the hotels uh, here in the city of Las Vegas, and I've learned that you do not share Christ when you are supposed to be working. 
You can't be telling your testimony. You can't be sharing Christ when you're not supposed to. When you're supposed to be working, you're supposed to be working. You get paid to work, not to testify. They catch you testifying. Pretty soon you ain't going to have a job. And I learned that the hard way. I was a bold Christian. And I would uh, testify to other non-believers in a bold way. And that was the wrong way to do it. Uh, inside the hotel. Well, uh, the hotel was paying me to work, not to witness. Amen. So maybe you can witness, like on your lunch break or on the on your way out of the hotel or on your way into the hotel. But uh, there's a time to share, and there's a time not to share. Amen. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, the word testimony. The word testimony means to witness. Uh, like you, you, you bear witness. You bore witness. You bore witness in court. You bore witness that that person did such thing. You bore witness in behalf of something or a, a, a former writer or a spokesman statement. It can be a written statement. You can speak about it uh, in trial concerning witness of what you saw. It was real. It was real because you saw it. That becomes a testimony, a different type of testimony. Uh, the other testimony was when you are um, sworn in court of law to give a testimony. Your testimony has to be true or false. Uh, you can try to share a false testimony, but if you get caught, uh, you would have to pay the penalty. So the first one I'm going to read, um, I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of John chapter 8 John chapter 8 while you are looking for John chapter 8 I'm going to read you one in the Old Testament John chapter 8 John chapter 8 okay here we go when you're looking for that one, I'm going to read you something that I found on 2 Samuel chapter 116. 2 Samuel 116. I'm just going to read this one while you're looking for John chapter 8, beginning at verse 15. But listen to this one. 2 Samuel 116. So David said, your blood is on your own head. That's heavy. Your blood is upon your own head for your own mouth has testified against you. Your own mouth has testified against you saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. He said, I have killed the Lord's anointed. Therefore, your testimony, you're going to be persecuted and testify because of your own word. Amen. I'll read it again, 2 Samuel 1 16, while you're looking for John chapter 8. 2 Samuel 1 16 says, So David said, Your blood is on your own head, for your own mouth has testified against you. See, it is by their testimony that will testify against us. Example, uh, Jesus saved me, healed me, delivered me. I will be judged by my own word. Amen. Uh, and I'm speaking the truth. Okay. Are we there? John chapter 8. Um, begin reading in verse 15. You deserve the Okay, 
15. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. Jesus is speaking here. Verse 16. And yet, if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. Jesus is testifying here. Verse 17. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. The testimony of two men is true. So you can have one person, you can have two people testifying of one thing. Verse 18. I am one who bears witness. Here we go again. I am one who bears witness of myself. And the Father who sent me bear witness of me. The Father bears witness of Jesus. The Father testifies of Jesus. Jesus testifies of the Father. Here we have two uh, different individuals testifying of themselves. Uh, he, Jesus is testifying that he was sent uh, by the Father. The testimony of two men are true. Our, our Christian testimony is not about us. Me, me, me. I, I, I. Our Christian testimony is not about us. Okay, let's go to uh, the book of Psalm chapter 18. Psalm chapter 18. We're going to learn some things concerning... Concerning the word testimony and what is a testimony. Psalm chapter 18. This is how we learn when we start turning pages. We get to learn where the books are. Amen. John 18. 1, 2, and 3. John 8. Uh, Psalm 18, 1, 2, and 3. Psalm chapter 18, verses 1, 2, and 3, and then verse 6 by itself. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and my horn of my salvation, my stronghold, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. He's testifying. He's testifying. I will love the Lord with all my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. He's testifying here. He's telling us about his testimony. My deliverer, my God, he's testifying. This is the this is the kind of testimony that we have to we, we have to share, just like this. My strength in whom I will trust. My shield, God is my shield and my horn of my salvation and my stronghold. Verse 6 says. I am testifying here. Verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. I called upon the Lord and I cried out to my God. And he heard my voice from his temple. And my cry came before him even to his ear. In my distress, I called upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's that's how you you uh, you get a testimony is by when you start calling upon God, then God answers you. When you say, "Lord, heal me, save me, deliver me," and then He does it, now you have a testimony. Now you can go and tell others what God has done for you. I'm going to jump from the to the uh, New Testament. John, uh, Matthew chapter 8 Matthew chapter 8 
We're going to read a Jesus testimony. We're reading, reading testimonies of uh, people. A Jesus testimony, and uh, one is recorded on Matthew chapter 8. Again, that's just how we learn to turn pages and to open our Bibles and feed ourselves. Feed ourselves. I mean, there's one, there, there's one way where, where you go to a church and, and, and the pastor or the teacher takes a spoon and feeds you uh, every scripture one by one, one by one. But learning how to open a Bible and go to the, uh, that's how we grow and we learn where Psalms is, we learn where Matthew is. Matthew chapter 8, I'm going to begin reading at verse 1. When he, Jesus, had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. I wonder why they followed him. Maybe, they, uh, maybe they've heard of people that have great testimonies. And multitudes followed him, verse 2. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Verse 4. And Jesus said to him, See that you do not tell no one, but go your way and show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift of Moses that Moses commanded. Listen to this. As a testimony to them. As a testimony to them. Here he, here he is, Jesus heals him. Amen. Now he says, go your way and, uh, and, and share this as a testimony to them. Jesus wants us to, tell, uh, to share our testimony when he touched us, when he healed us, when he delivered us. Verse 5. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion, centurion, came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Like I said, if you know somebody that's sick in bed, cannot make it to church, we go over there, we're going to pray for them, the Lord's going to heal them, that person will have a testimony. They'll be able to come to church. Say, I, I couldn't even walk to church. But they prayed for me. Jesus healed me. And I am here to testify of what the Lord has done in my life. Verse 7. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. Sometimes when somebody tells us, hey, somebody's in a hospital. They're dying. Jesus says, I will come and heal him. We Christians are going like, well, okay, we'll keep him in prayer. We will keep him in prayer. One thing is just to say it. The other one is uh, it's like uh, be doers of the word, not hearers only. Jesus says, I will come and heal him. Verse 8. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word, and my servant will be healed. And that is by faith. He says, Lord, you don't even have to come to my house. But Jesus, I believe that you are powerful enough just to speak the word. And from here to the Philippines, and my servant will be healed in Jesus' name. Now here, I just picked up something by the Holy Spirit. It's saying that we're praying for somebody in the Philippines. We're praying for somebody in Spain. In Madrid, you know, when a, test of, when, when a prayer request goes out. And says, you know what, sister so-and-so, she's very sick. She's laying in bed. She looks like she's going to die. Well, it's almost like we really don't have to go to uh, Madrid. Uh, we can pray for them right here. And the Lord will honor uh, the prayer of faith right here because that's a miracle of God. Amen. So now when, when somebody in Madrid says, hey, thank you all for praying for us. Guess what? Sister is healed. We say, praise the Lord. Well, now we, she has a testimony. We have a testimony that they asked for prayer. We prayed for her. 
God healed her. We have a testimony even here in the city of Las Vegas that we prayed for someone in Madrid. Somebody Amen. say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The other one I want to read is uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And we're almost... John chapter 1, verses 19... John 1, 19. Okay, I'm there. I'm going to begin reading. John 1, 19 through 23. John 1, 19 says, Now this is the testimony of John. Here John the Baptist has a testimony. Right? And this testimony is recorded. He's writing the book. Uh, on uh, uh, the gospel according to John he reads uh, he starts at 19 he goes now this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him to ask him this is a testimony watch they're going to ask you who are you sister Faye who are you Hallelujah. Robert, who are you? That's what they asked John right here. <laughs> you got to be ready when they ask you, who are you? Como están on you? Who are you? Who do you think you are? I'm yeah, you're supposed to tell them. You're supposed to tell them. That's why we have classes on Wednesday night. To learn who we are in Christ. Okay, he confessed. Ooh, confession is a good one. When they ask you, you confess. He confessed and did not deny, but confess. I am not the Christ. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I am not the Christ. I am actually nobody apart from Christ. I am nothing. Apart from Christ. Amen. I am not the Christ. And they asked him. What then? Are you Elijah? He said. I am not. Are you the prophet? You know how many people go around saying. I am the prophet. Yes. Listen to me. You don't listen to me. You're going to be in trouble. <laughs> He's a false prophet. <laughs> no, it's not. Hallelujah. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. Okay. Say no. no Even if you were, say no. Because saying, I am the prophet, he gets exalted and pride comes in and then he falls. Because pride comes before the fall. 22, then they said to him, Who are you? That we may give an answer to those who sent us. Hmm. Hey, who are you? I'm a child of the living God. Go tell your people what I told them. Whoa! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! What do you say about yourself? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, I'm I'm the great evangelist. You know, God sent me here. <laughs> Come on! What do you say of yourself? He says, I am. This is so awesome. If you're an evangelist, if you're a pastor, if you're nobody, if you're just a servant. I am just a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Because Jesus is coming. Make straight the way of the Lord. I am just a voice. Crying in the wilderness in the deserts of Las Vegas. Prepare.
prepare yourself because Jesus is coming. Who are you? I am just a voice. Watch. Let me take the microphone. I am just a voice. You don't need a mic. God put that voice in you to be a voice for Him in the city of Las Vegas. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise okay, the Lord. what else I got? I got... Uh, uh, I'll read you this one. In Hebrews 11.2, the elders of the church of Jesus Christ, the elders held and obtained a good testimony. The elders in the church, they maintained a good testimony, not a bad testimony. What about those guys that go to the harvest over there and says, man, you know what? This testimony stinks. <laughs> Hello? I mean, hey, 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 no. No, no. We got to make sure that's why we have these classes tonight. Lord, change us even tonight. I want a good testimony. They're going to talk about uh, Brother Jesse. Uh, yeah, I saw him on the bus and I tell you what, he was a good, I tell you what, he was testifying on what Jesus was doing. Either that or, I, I, or, they, or they caught me in a bad testimony. I would say, John, sorry, I'm just having a bad day, you know. I didn't feel like testifying. I said, everybody to hell. I said, hey, get out of my life, everybody. It's a bad testimony. They said, well, I thought he was, you know, the pastor of the church. So we have to maintain. See, Hebrews 11, 2. And the elders obtain a good testimony for God. Revelation uh, 1, 9. I'll finish with that one. Revelation 1, 9. Very simple. Very simple. All the way from the book of Genesis, all the way to Revelation, everybody had a testimony of God, of Jesus Christ, of the Holy Spirit. They all testified. John 1, 9. Well, Jesus is testifying on uh, verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's testifying here. says, uh, the Lord who is and who was and who was to come the Almighty uh, here's a good testimony in verse 1 the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show his servants things which must shortly come to play, place and he sent it and signified it by his angel to his servant John John who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ. John had a testimony of Jesus Christ. And it was the best powerful testimony John ever saw and held and walked with. Walked with Jesus. What a powerful uh, uh, testimony Jesus uh, had when he walked with his disciples. Amen. He, he never abandoned them. He never... Uh, 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 share dirty jokes or funny jokes with them but Jesus came to do uh, Jesus came to reveal the Father quickly you want me to, sh to start with with my testimony or, or are you ready are you ready are you ready to come up not you I don't have one I need, I need prayer but I don't have a testimony. okay okay come share something Jesus did something for you you got a testimony Right now, we want to share. You have to testify what Jesus did for you. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. While well, you're thinking about it, uh, I'll tell you mine. The testimony of what happened was that uh, me and some other people, just like, like here, we had a, a, an evangelism class. Right? And then what happened is that uh, we said, okay, ready? He said, okay, we prayed, and then we went outside. Right? We went down, walking down Charleston. Charleston and 13. They say Charleston and 13 is one of the worst, uh, especially 15 years ago. A drug city, poker city, everything. Uh, anyway, they cleaned it up by now. But anyway, we were walking down uh, Charleston, and... Uh, we're looking for souls. We're looking for people. There goes one. There goes two. There goes two. And, and I was a baby Christian. I was a very young Christian. And uh, we saw one that's coming that way. And then he saw us, right? 
and then he he cut across through the parking lot so we ran that way and got him gotcha we stopped them our job is to go get them jesus said go ye into highways and byways and compel them to come go look for that one that's lost that was our job evangelism going looking for souls it's called fishing i will make you fishers of men you're going to go fishing so we go over there and and, and uh uh, hey brother, where are you going? You're going so fast. He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. He said, the, we said, the, the leader, I, I didn't know how to testify yet. I didn't know how to witness yet. I, I'm, a, I'm a trainer. I'm in training. And the leader said, do you know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior? Should you die tonight? You know, you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. He said, wow. He said, you know what? I need prayer. I need prayer. Really? Okay, let's pray. We pray for him, this and that, Father, this and that. And, and, and I was just like a baby puppy, just watching everything go. Like I was excited. Make a long story short. Here's the testimony. Uh, the next Sunday, he came to church. He's sitting right there. His wife and his three children. Anyway, we have church and this and that. Anybody else got testimony? Anybody else? People wanted to come up and testify because that church of evangelism training center was on fire. Oh, God, it was on fire. People, they testify. I want to testify then the boy, the, the young boy, he must have been like 21, 22, 23 years old. He says, ah, me, 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 I, I I want to share something. He comes over. They give him the microphone. He said, you know what? I was going down Charleston and I saw these crazy Christians and he said, man, I wanted to get away from them. I wanted to cut through the parking lot, but they came and stopped me. Then they prayed for me. And then I started crying. And then I went to my wife and my children. He says, look, there's my wife and my three children. He says, you know where I, where I was going? He says, I was going to kill my wife and my three kids. That's what he said. That's what he said. He came up. He said, these crazy Christians, they stopped me. He said, you know where I was going? He says, I was on my way to kill my wife and my three kids. But... Jesus stopped them on the way. You see, when these people are walking down the sidewalk, down everywhere, you don't know what they're thinking. You don't know what they're thinking. They ain't thinking about Jesus.